Okay, here we go. I turned off my recorder because it seems to have been interfering with the PowerPoint. Um, so hello everyone, thanks for taking the time to participate today. I wish to thank Don and Tom for inviting me to speak and for hosting the event. Please jot down my email address, it's on the screen there, optionslam.com at gmail.com. So just quickly, a little bit about myself. As some of you know, I am a principal owner of the website optionslam.com, where we have a special focus on stocks at earnings events and at and around the earnings uh, release uh, timing. I have been trading options for over 15 years and educating others in the field of options strategy for well over 11. I've taught through many venues, ranging from uh, the Market Student Group, which was a Yahoo group back in the day, which I was a founder, and I teach through Oshislam.com, which is my website. I taught classes at Grand Valley State University through the Grand Rapids Investment Club, as well as other guest appearances on many other website webinars, including Option View, Capital Discussions, SMB University, and the Options Tribe, and more. So today you are here to learn about the double eagle. I've been asked many times, Marco, isn't the double eagle just a fancy name for a plain old double calendar? And the answer is no. A resounding, absolutely not at all. Stay with me here, and I think you will come to understand. Today, if you stay to the end, there will be an opportunity for you to roll, enroll in the next double eagle workshop, which is an intensive an extensive live trading experience that takes place over five live sessions. They are all recorded, two to three hours each session over a four week period of time. So more on that at the end. Also at the end, you will be invited to participate in more free webinars coming up within the week that will expand on what you learned today. I often get asked, what kind of results can I expect with the double eagle? So we will come back to this slide later, but I just want you to take note that this graph represents over 1,600 trades of the double eagle conventional setup, and all of the winners and all of the losers are shown. And day zero, as you can see, I hope you can see my cursor, Day zero is the final day in a calendar spread of the front expiring. So at this point, in theory, the trader's closing out the back long contracts and locking in the profit. All winners and all losers represented over 1,600 trades here. You can see on front expiration day, uh, there is a net result of 25% profit. And these are completely unmanaged trades. No profit targets are set. I, I have control over that with my software and our tools that we've built. But the way I set this to pull up this graph is to represent completely, totally unmanaged trades, put them on on day one, take them off on, on day zero, Put them on on day one. Well, day one is the beginning of the trade date, which is generally 20 to 30 days ahead of front expiration date, the way we do it, okay? All right, so more on this. I'll come back to this graph later. What is a calendar spread? You know what? I just want to double check, make sure I got this chat up. Um, Okay, are we okay to go there, Aramir? Because I did restart from the top, right? You're good. Okay, good. So, thank you. I, I've got the chat up now, so now I can see if there's any uh, other instructions. Thank you. So, what is a calendar spread? Uh, a calendar is an options spread strategy using all calls or all puts. Simple definition here of the same strike in the same quantity, but in different expiration cycles, okay? Whereas the shorter dated option is sold and the identical strike in a longer dated option is purchased. Generally, calendars have an excellent risk to reward ratio. Problem with many calendar spreads is that they have a very narrow profit window, oftentimes. So, Let's start 
by building a calendar spread together. Let's start by selling the front month out of the money call. We sell the shorter dated option in and of itself. This is a great strategy, selling out of the money option contracts. Out of the money con option contracts have theoretically low probability of expiring in the money, right? So therefore, this is typically a powerful strategy to sell out of the money options, whether they're puts or calls. However, selling naked short options exposes the trader to unlimited risk, and this is oftentimes not desirable. So to alleviate the unlimited risk, the trader simultaneously buys the same strike in a longer dated option. If you can see the bottom of my screen, the first strike, this is using the Thinkorswim software, the first, uh, the previous slide sold the 170 call in the November 2nd options. And then the second slide, this slide, added uh, buying the November 16th 170 call, the same type of option. They're both calls. They're both the same strike. They're different expiration cycles. They're both the same quantity. Classic definition of a calendar spread. By doing this, we have now defined the risk in the trade to the net debit. The debit of $5.25 less the credit of $4.20 leaves the trader exposed to exactly $1.05 worth of risk. Or of course, $105 given that each contract represents 100 shares of stock. Now the max loss is the net debit. The debit paid for the calendar is the maximum loss. That cannot change. However, the profit picture in a calendar spread as illustrated by analyzed software such as Thinkorswim, or Option View, or OneNet Explorer, or whatever other analyzing option software you might have, the, the risk cannot change. The risk is defined and set at the, at the onset at the trade initiation. However, the profit picture can and does change. There's the, but what's the problem? I mean, it's a great risk to reward ratio. It looks like we can make possibly as much as $300 risking only $100, right? So there's an awesome risk to reward ratio in a calendar spread, but what's the problem? Couple things, price is here 162, and for us to make a profit with this trade, price has to go up. And if it goes wrong direction and it goes down, this trade will, will realize and come into net losses rather quickly, as you can see, we're not very far away from the today line, nor the expiration, front expiration green line is the uh, November 3rd expiration date of the front contracts in this particular trade. There's only a narrow window in which to win as well. It's not even, it's about one half of a standard deviation is the, as you can see by the width of these, this shaded area is represented, representing about one standard devi deviation. And so uh, a couple things wrong with it. Narrow window in which to win and can only win in one direction. And this trade takes on a bias. What's the answer? It's simple. Do a double calendar. Do the put calendar in, in addition to the call calendar. So here in this, in this slide, I've added what you can see now. We have the original call calendar on at the 170 strike, and we've added a 155 put calendar. These slides were created just a few days ago. I think it was last Thursday or Friday at the end of the week. The stock, as you can see, is Facebook. So that's better. Now we have defined risk, a very wide window in which to capture profit, and also, we are now delta neutral. It doesn't matter if the stock price goes up or down, so long as it stays within the one standard deviation, we are golden. The risk graph looks like this on day one of the trade. It's true that the max loss is defined by the debit, but something else here is extremely important to point out. The risk graph profit potential, as I mentioned earlier, as illustrated here by the green line, represents 
The profit loss risk graph on the expiration day of the front short contracts. However, the PL picture is subject to change as the trade matures between now and FE, what I call FE front expiration day. And the main culprit that can cause this risk graph to change is fluctuations in implied volatility. As IV changes, so does the risk graph. So why a double calendar at earnings? Well, we have some distinct edges trading calendars at earnings time. We know something. Implied volatility will increase in options as we approach the earnings date. And we know which option series will get IV build and which will not. IV, we also know, will crush after the earnings release comes out. So knowing all of this about implied volatility and how it acts around earnings is a great part of our edge as double eagle traders. IV will build and, what it, and we know what it will build to and we know, we know that when we enter the trade because we have collected the statistics on the 100 or so stocks that we follow with this strategy. Let's see how the double eagle trader has an edge by evaluating the Greeks in this trade. There are definite differences when comparing the Greeks of our short contracts in the front expiration cycle. The front is the, is the shorter dated expiration cycle. Those are the ones we're selling versus the long contracts, the ones we're buying in the back expiration cycle of a calendar spread. So let's review the Greeks and the differences. You guys who are used to trading verticals, and a lot of people don't trade calendars very often, right? Uh, so if you're used to trading verticals and butterflies and iron condors and other variations of those trades, uh, you're gonna realize after today's meeting that calendars are really uh, like what I call, I like to call a bird of a different feather. We're gonna take a quick look, I'm not gonna bore you to tears with this, at the four main Greeks that are involved, Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. Let's move on. Delta measures the degree to which an option premium will change with a $1 move up in the underlying stock. Out of the money contracts, out of the money strikes, carry a higher delta when compared to the same strike in the shorter dated option. Out of the money strikes in our longer dated options will carry a higher delta when compared to that same strike in a shorter dated option. Delta measures the degree to which an option premium will change with a $1 move up in the underlying stock, right? Everybody's got that, right? So, there are some nuances, however, that the double eagle trader is well aware of that many of you verticals and butterfly traders don't need to be so well conscious of. When you're trading all your contracts in the same expiration cycle, it's not quite that important to be aware of some of these delta and other Greek nuances that we need to be more aware of as we're trading calendars and double calendars, especially around earnings events. When price goes through one of our strikes, we experience what we call delta inversion. This is oftentimes when we look to make adjustments to the position. Let me illustrate. What, I forgot that these were uh, floating in here and flying in. Conversely, in the money strikes carry a higher delta in the shorter dated options when compared to the same strike in longer dated options. Let me show you that and il illustrate that with this uh, options chain out of the thinker swim. Delta out of the money options. Out of the money options with the stock trading at 160, uh, all of these strikes, 162, 165, et cetera, are out of the money on the call side, right? So if you take a look at the delta of out of the money options, you see that the calls that we bought in this example, 165, 
is carrying a delta of 43. However, the same strike, the 165 in the shorter dated options, is carrying a smaller delta. So as price moves towards our out of the money strike, our longs are making money at a faster rate due to delta then our shorts are gaining, or in, 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 in our case, we're selling those shorts. So we're gaining 43 cents for every dollar the stock moves, and we're losing 31 cents for a net profit of the difference as, our, as price moves towards our out-of-the-money contracts. Conversely, if you take a look at in-the-money contracts, all of, those stock, all of those strikes that are trading under, under 160 and 30 cents, which would include the 160 strike, it actually has a, uh, uh, it's an at the money strike. And all of these other strikes, the 157, the 55s and the 52s are all in the money strikes. Once price goes through, had we been, had we been long this 152 calendar, had we been, if we can just pretend for a moment that we got into the 152 when it was an out of the money contract, the longs would have had higher deltas. However, as price went through the 152, now the shorts have a higher delta. A high, now we're losing 80 cents for only making 68 cents. So this is what we call delta inversion in a double eagle trade. And this is a time that we need to act and generally manage our trades and refer to one of the adjustments that we teach in the Double Eagle workshop course. So again, just to illustrate, as price is going, as price is down here and price is going towards the strike, our longer dated options are making money faster than our shorter dated options, showing you that this is the profitability potential, which when the price goes through our strike, delta inversion takes place, and now the shorter dated options are losing money to our position faster than our longs are making money, thereby taking us on the road to potentially losing and giving back profits and possibly even entering into the area where a net loss could possibly be taken. Gamma is a measure of the rate of change in the corresponding delta. Gamma is always higher on the shorter dated options than the longer dated options. And it is always highest with the at the money options. Okay, so Gamma in the last days of the option, of, of the trade, I should say, if the price is at one of the strikes, then the gamma in the front shorts is very high compared to the gamma in the long backs. The double eagle trader keeps a close eye on the trade when price is at one of the strikes. This is the time when the trader either locks in profits or makes a decision to adjust the trade in an attempt to extend further existing profits. More on gamma, more much more in depth discussion of gamma in the workshop. The workshop uh, uh, again, is uh, generally a, a minimum of 11 hours of live trading and training time. So gamma, this is just an illustration to show you that gamma is this column, is always going to be higher in the uh, shorter dated contracts than it is in the longer dated contracts. And it's higher at the at the money contracts than it is the in the money or the out of the money contracts. So again, we'll spend more time on that in the workshop. Theta, all important Greek to the double eagle trader. This is one of the key things that makes a double eagle profitable, and that is selling those front contracts with the hopes that they're going to expire worthless. So we get to keep the, all the premium that we collected when we opened the trade, we keep that premium and that offsets our costs in our longs, and it all helps to offset our theta decay in our longs, because our longs are actually losing money to theta as well, okay? 
But if we're going to collect some theta time premium, that helps offset our longer, uh, our long contract theta. So this is also a very important part of the double eagle. Theta is the rate at which an option loses value over time. Theta is represented in the options chain as a negative number. You see it's represented as a negative number, but this is based on the assumption that the trader is buying the option, therefore losing extrinsic value to the option on a daily basis. For example, a theta represented by a negative six, like this one circled, is going to lose theoretically six cents per day to time erosion. Okay? However, since we are selling option premium in the fronts, that becomes positive theta to us in our position. Okay? So that's, this is, we're selling this contract. So this becomes positive theta, helping to offset the negative theta that we have in our long dated contracts. Just another reason why the Greeks are going to come into play a little bit more intense in a calendar or diagonal spread than you may have noticed in some of the verticals and some of the uh, uh, other uh, contracts and strategies that you trade in um, uh, option strategies, which are uh, all the contracts are all expiring inside the same expiration cycle. So this risk, gra this graph shows, uh, could, could just as easily uh, say weeks, by the way, down here it says months to expire, but it could just as easily represent uh, weeks to expiration or even days to expiration. The concept here is the same, that in the longer dated options, the ones that we're owning are in a very shallow uh, a part of the theta curve. And the closer we get to expiration day of the contracts, the steeper, the faster that theta is eroding and decaying. So selling contracts that erode faster, buying contracts that erode slower to time decay is a inert uh, advantage to the double eagle trader. Now, we know from the previous slide that the shorter dated options are in a steeper part of the theta curve, thereby losing value to time faster than our long contracts. But another concept not to be ignored is that the strike you are trading has an impact on the speed of theta decay as well. As you can see from this diagram, out of the money con options have the highest rate of theta, while in the money options have the least amount of theta decay. This concept also comes into play in managing a double eagle trade. When we start out the trade, we are dealing with all out of the money contracts in a double eagle. However, as the trade matures, oftentimes we make adjustments and we find ourselves managing a trade which has contracts with all of the above, out of the money contracts, maybe some at the money contracts, maybe even some in the money contracts through trade maturity, evolution, and adjusting, we may find ourselves holding all three types of contracts. And knowing how theta is acting with these is going to be beneficial to the double eagle trader. Now, before we get into the final Greek, let's talk a little bit about implied volatility. Earnings brings implied volatility. It brings it at a different rate to different stocks. Some stocks have huge, what we, what we call as double eagle traders, we call it implied volatility build. How much will the implied volatility build as we approach an earnings date? And we have, statistics on this, and I'll show you some of those soon, but we keep track of that on every stock that we follow for this trade. So we know before we even put the trade on what to expect in IV build on a stock by stock basis. I will show you that in a few. As you can see here in this options chain of Facebook, screen captured late last week, that the earnings release 
date is currently estimated to be October 31st. Now it's not showing that on the screen other than it, I, I, I plugged that in here. We have an estimated date of October 31st for Facebook. They have not yet announced, as far as, far as I know, I don't think they've announced yet, pretty sure they haven't, um, when they're going to actually have their earnings released. But we have some tools that we work in the background. We have a tool that we call estimated, estimate next ER date tool and it's a it's a very powerful tool and we have a very high success rate of estimating these dates correctly um, but the point here is implied volatility in contracts that expire prior to the earnings release date are carrying a considerably lower implied volatility than those contracts that expire after the October 31st estimated earnings release date. Let's take a closer look. Contracts prior to October 31st that expire October 31st or, or before, 27%, 27%, 26.7, 27.6, 27.4, but a big bump up to 34.3 when we get into contracts that are expiring after the anticipated earnings event. This is key to understanding that our longer dated contracts that we're buying are going to benefit from implied volatility build. Now I know what everyone says, well, this is, uh, you're, if you're, this is not what we were taught, Marco. You're, we were taught to, to, to sell high implied volatility and buy cheap implied volatility. Well, that's why I say that a double eagle trade is not a normal regular calendar because we are breaking all the rules that every, all the gurus teach out there about how to trade calendars. We're breaking all the rules. Vega is the measurement of an options price sensitivity to changes in the implied volatility. I like to say that Vega is to implied volatility as delta is to price. As price goes up a dollar, the value of our option premium goes up by the delta amount, right? If you've got an at the money contract, it has a 50 cent delta, the, our, our, our a 0.50 delta, it's, our, our option premium is gonna go up by 50 cents when the price of the underlying stock goes up a dollar. Vega is the measurement of an options price sensitivity to changes in the implied volatility. So as implied volatility increases 1%, the premium of our option contract will increase by the Vega amount for that strike. Vega is always higher, this is important, Vega is always higher in the longer dated options. Let's take a look at the Vega column. You see the Vegas in the shorter dated contracts hovering around 14, 13, 12. Look at our longer dated contracts, double those numbers, easily double those numbers in the longer dated contracts in this example. Vega is not only always higher in our longer dated contracts, and that's a good thing, because why? We expect implied volatility to continue going up. Remember I told you we keep track of all the statistics of how much IV build to get that we get in each of the stocks on a stock by stock basis. I'll show you some more on that in a little bit. So regular calendars and regular double calendars are a common strategy which are typically applied during times of low volatility. They generally come with a set of rules and prerequisites which double eagle traders almost completely ignore. For example, most options educators when teaching how to trade a calendar will tell you to always trade when volatility is low. Never enter a calendar at high IV. They will tell you to sell high IV and buy low IV. They have other guidelines too. Always buy at least twice as much time as you are selling. Yeah, always they also t teach you always collect at least half of the premium when selling the fronts as you are paying for the backs, et cetera, et cetera. Again, as double eagle traders, we are pretty much breaking all of those rules. Look at the beauty of this double calendar risk graph though. One to one risk re reward ratio, right? 
risking 200 to possibly make as much as 200 or maybe even more if you can pin out a strike? By definition, this looks to like it has a solid 68% probability of profit, right? Almost covering the full one standard deviation shaded area would be 68% probability of profit, right? If IV deteriorates at all, however, this profit picture will rapidly deteriorate. Yes, your max loss is defined, but in calendar spreads, don't forget, the, the risk graph only can define your risk in a calendar spread. The profit potential is a variable. Totally dynamic, mainly based on implied volatility changes. The double eagle traders pretty much ignore all those rules. Like I said, we are breaking all of those rules. Completely counter to what all the gurus out there are preaching, we will go into other differences between a double eagle and regular calendar in the workshop. So now that you have a little more insight into the Greeks and how each of them are different when comparing shorter dated options to longer dated options, and there are some really valid differences there, aren't there? as well as how different implied volatility can be from one expiration compared to a longer dated expiration cycle, especially when looking at expiration cycles that are beyond the earnings release date. Now that I've brought you this far, I have some bad news for you. I told you that the double eagle is different than regular calendars. Well, here is some of those differences represented graphically on the next slide with a profit and loss risk graph. The double eagle and profit and loss risk graph does not look nearly as promising as this regular double calendar that you're looking at now. Do you see the difference in a double eagle, typical risk graph put on? This is day one of a trade. This is captured live today. And this is, you see the problem? The entire risk graph is below the zero line. The front expiration date, profit and loss risk graph, that's the green line, as well as the today line, are pretty much completely underwater. It looks as if there is absolutely no way to make money with this trade. The entire front expiration risk graph is below the zero line. Well, folks, I have to warn you, this is what most all of our trades look like on trade day. When we first enter the trade, when we first initiate the trade, it looks like a suicide mission. However, as double eagle traders, we trade these strategies every week of the year. That's right. We put on new, new double eagle trades every single week of the year. There are huge opportunities. Yes, there are busy times and there are slow times, but there, are, but there is always an opportunity. I have double eagle trades on in my account constantly 365 days a year. We know a few things as double eagle traders. We know that theta will work for us. Remember, Theta is going to erode faster in our fronts than it does in our back longs. We know that delta will work for us as long as our contracts are still out of the money. And we know that implied volatility combined with higher vega is going to work for us to help bring this double eagle sad looking risk graph into profitability. We have a huge set of tools in our, in our back office. We keep track of historical trades. Here's just a sheet. This is what we call our profit and loss summary sheet. This is one of our, we have several on every stack, okay? We have, uh, we ha we have variations of the double eagle, uh, different weeks of separation. 
uh, sometimes we use monthly, sometimes we use uh, adjacent weeks, sometimes we use two or three weeks of separation. Depends on the situation and the circumstances. So we have, we have literally thousands of, of, of historical trades in our master database. This is just one of the P&L summary reports uh, of, uh, of Facebook um, out of our master database. The, quickly, symbol. Price of the underlying on trade day. This is on trade day, the day that, the, that we put the trade on. What was the debit of the trade? How much did the, so these statistics come into play to help us manage trades going forward and make decisions. I'll show you that in a little bit, in just a little bit in the next couple of slides. I'll get through this one really fast. Uh, what was the largest potential profit in, in, in each of these trades? So each line is a trade here. Each line is a different trade, right? Uh, what was the earnings release date? Aha, this is that all important data that I was talking about. What was the implied volatility of the back expiration contracts on the trade date? In this top example, it was 37. How much did that implied volatility, implied volatility build as we held the trade moving on and into the front expiration date? 37 plus 18 tells me that the backs were then at 55 points. They went from 37 up 18 points to 55 between the trade date and the front expiration date. Well, don't forget, you got that 55, that, that 18 points of IV build uh, multiplied by a Vega factor that really goes a long way in offsetting your theta decay in your backs, okay? so. Uh, right now, our data, our, our, our back test uh, uh, database uh, includes a, just over 100 stocks that we are currently following. We are monitoring about a dozen other stocks that we're thinking about adding to our list of stocks. But really, honestly, with 100 stocks that we have, we do have trades to put on every week of the year. Because don't forget, there's four earnings announcements per year per stock. So we get to trade Facebook four times a year, right? So it's not, it's 100 stocks times four earnings events is 400 opportunities. So the strategy does not work on all stocks though. We put each stock through a rigorous set of testing before adding any new stocks to our list. So I showed you the slide at the beginning. Let's dig into it just a little bit. Zero day is the last day we are in the trade. Oftentimes we find ourselves holding the trade into the final days, as this is sometimes when the best profits are realized. There are some gamma risks involved here when you're holding the trade that late into the front expiration. But I teach how to manage that risk and how to adjust the trade when it becomes apparent in our position. In the meantime, the last days, of the trade is when theta decay in the front accelerates to the double eagle trader's benefit. And also, we are now getting close to the earnings release date, which also accelerates implied volatility build in our back long contracts, thereby offsetting theta even more, and sometimes even boosting our long back contract premium. This is the data within which that previous graph was created. Let's take a quick look at it. I have, I, I can control a profit target and a stop loss with my, with my program, uh, but I got them set 2000% profit loss, profit target, 2000% uh, stop loss. In other words, they are not in play. This is not filtering any trades out based on profit loss or stop. We put the trade on on day one, we hold the trade all the way to front expiration date, and that's what the previous um, chart was illustrating, and it took 1,609 trades. Let's take a look at the statistics. There were 502 losers. That sounds like a lot of losers, Marco. Yeah, except that there was 1,107 winners. And not only that, we got 69% winning trades versus 31% losing trades, and we're winning not only more often, but we're winning more money than we're losing. So we win 69% of the time, $105. We lose 31% of the time, $75. And don't forget, I can't stress this enough. 
Those are all unmanaged trades. We didn't adjust any trades that got in trouble in that, in our historical results. We, we actively manage these trades. So we actually experience much fewer losers, much fewer losers than represented by this data because we are actively managing the trade and we are making adjustments when we de deem it necessary. And if we get into a small loss on the trade, we'll cut our losses quickly and, and, and rarely do we see losses that uh, come to this level of, uh, of $75 on a, uh, uh, anyway, I think you know what I'm trying to say there. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see, we got, uh, uh, cumulative profit and loss, $78,000, um, 1,609 trades open, 1,609 trades closed, um, uh, $115,000 of winnings versus $37,000 of losers uh, takes us to a net profit and loss on those 1,600 trades, unfiltered, $78,000 profit. The, by the way, these are all one lots. This is all one lot trades. These are not, that's not how we trade the strategy because we trade the strategy based on your account size, right? So if you have got a very large account, you might do 10 contracts. Someone else might do 20 contracts. Uh, some large size traders may do even much more than that. And I do have many very large size traders trading with me this strategy, very large size. We also have some very small size traders with accounts less than $10,000 trading this strategy. Now they're gonna be somewhat limited as to doing maybe only one contract trades or two contract trades and staying away from some of the bigger, higher price stocks. However, this is very effectively done, even with a very small trading account as well. Okay, moving on. Folks, that's pretty much my presentation. But now I'm gonna talk, talk to you quickly uh, about the uh, upcoming workshop that I am offering and uh, it's gonna be starting here in just a couple of weeks from now on October 13th, which is a Saturday, okay? So Saturday, noon to three, and that is Eastern Standard Time. I should have wrote that in here, but uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is New York, New York time, right? New York City time. I'm not in New York, I'm in Michigan. So uh, October 13th, Saturday from 12 to three, that will be the training session, teaching you all the ins and outs of the double eagle strategy, okay? We'll get into much more depth. I just barely touched on stuff here today, but we're gonna have a full three hours to get into that on Saturday the 13th. And then we're gonna follow it up with four more live during hours, during market hours, trading training, what I like to call trading training sessions, where we get together live, and by the way, you don't need to be there. You, can, I'll be providing recordings to each and every one of these events promptly after they're uh, uh, after they're complete. And uh, if you're not able to attend live, you'll get the recording by email that you can download to your hard drive and watch it and review it. In fact, I encourage you to do so many times over. Let me move on. The soonest we will be offering this workshop again, by the way, will be April. So it's not like you, you got an opportunity every month. We're gonna do it in October and we're gonna do it again next April, April, 2019, okay? So uh, that's next spring, folks, after a long, cold winter. At least it's gonna be cold here in Michigan. At least that's what we expect. So sign up while there are seats available. There is limited seating. We can't, we, we do have to close the doors. Uh, at, at some point. So there is a limit to how many people we can accommodate. There will be another webinar next week. Let me show you some things that, some tools that we, these are all tools. Okay, we, these are all tools that we have in the background. Now, if you are a member at optionslam.com, you, uh, you have access to our OptionSlam backtesting tool. So you can create your own database. And I encourage you to do so. But we use the OptionSlam backtesting tool to create our database. 
we have created a, a master database that is almost 3,000 trades long right now. We keep it updated and current. Every time a stock has a new earnings event, we add several different variations of the, of the uh, double eagle to our database, ever increasing the amount of back statistics that we have. We have our P&L summary reports. I'm gonna show you more about these back office tools in, an, in a webinar that's coming up uh, soon next week, in fact, a week from tomorrow, Thursday, a week from tomorrow, I'm gonna to have another webinar and I'm gonna show you more. I just didn't have the time today to show you all this stuff. We have a liquidity rating tool that is specific to the Double Eagle. It doesn't just measure how liquid a stock is today with, uh, with the front week options. It measures out many weeks in advance and several different expiration cycles. And it looks at out of the money options, the options that we're actually gonna be trading. And it looks for liquidity in those options. And then we rate our stocks specific to the double eagle strategy based on um uh, uh well based on a bunch of things but I'll, I, I don't have time to talk about that not right now uh i'll show you some of these tools in the webinar next thursday uh estimate the next er date very powerful tool um these tools that i'm showing here i we're, we're building one now that is so cool it's the iv build forecaster it forecasts how much iv is going to be left Beyond the data that we provide you in our management statistics tool, this is an, a, a supplement and a complement to that. These tools listed above are either under development or proprietary and not available for distribution. These are not included in the workshop. Now let me show you some tools that are included in the workshop. The Double Eagle workshop will include these following tools and I, I i'm going to show you a couple of these really quickly because again we're running out of time already trade tree for entry decision this is a flow chart tells you shows you all the steps that i teach you in the in the uh saturday session and it puts it into a flow chart so that you can refer to it and make it really easy to make your trade entry decisions Okay, it brings all the stuff that you learn in the first Saturday class back to the front of your memory by looking at a simple flow chart on your computer screen, or you can even print it out on paper. Another flow chart is for management decisions. Okay, another flow chart for, for management decisions and adjustment decisions. How and when to make an, an adjustment, how, what you got. I always teach traders that you got three decisions to make every day with every trade, with a double eagle at least. You can hold it and do nothing. You can close it and walk away with your profit or your small loss, whatever the case may be. These are very forgiving trades. Or you can adjust the trade, and I'll show you all ways of adjusting the trade, okay? So flowchart, strike selector, just what it sounds like. It's a, it's a little Excel uh, tool to help you uh, choose the correct strikes to use in your double eagle trade. The trade tracker, I'll show you that in just a minute. I'll show you an example of the trade tracker. Uh, I won't talk about it, I'll just show it to you. Adjustment matrix, this lays out in a matrix all of the adjustments that we discuss in the training sessions. We won't discuss adjustments so much on that first Saturday. I save that for the following classes. Um, so we'll, sp we'll spend, we're, we're gonna skip adjustments in the Saturday class because we got a, way too much to talk about already. So we'll spend time in every single class going forward um, uh, on uh, how to adjust trades, okay? But primarily the first Monday. Personalized support, I answer personally every email. And if, not, if need be, we'll even get online, we'll get on phone, or we'll get in a private go-to webinar session. Uh, that uh, once in a while, um, we have some traders who uh, request that kind of support as well. The management statistics tool, I'm gonna show you that. You're gonna have full access to that for the entire remainder of the fourth quarter of 2018, all the way till December 31st included now that's a 100 uh, uh subscription quarterly subscription but that's included in the double eagle uh workshop uh the workshop uh by the way is 1085 the price is 1085 dollars and it includes the uh um 
the management statistics tool. So let me show you, uh, here's the management statistics tool. This is, uh, this is a glimpse of what the management statistics tool looks like. I've hidden some of the symbol names, but you can see Facebook is, is there. And uh, let's look at what these columns are quickly. Predicted press release. This is important. I can't explain why now, but we predict when they're going to have their press release for the next upcoming earnings because that can have a huge effect on your trade. Believe me, folks. I'll show you in uh, uh, in future webinars how how drastic implied volatility can change when a stock company comes a company uh, of an underlying stock comes out and has a press release and announces the what day they're going to actually have their earnings release so it's really powerful earnings release date uh if it's green that means we've confirmed the date if it's not green that means it's an estimated date okay the front expiration date we recommend a date that you should use uh, a trade date we recommend a date that you should put on put the trade on um, there are some, uh, the, we, uh, the, the PDF is something that you have, what I call it the PDF for short, it's the management statistics tool. It's a link. You open it up on your, in a browser. It's the simple quick click of a, of a, of a mouse button. And this will come up in a browser window. I leave mine on all day long. I have a tab with mine on all day long. Right now we have I don't know, a lot of stocks. I think there's 30 stocks. I just picked a few to illustrate here today. But I think there's 30. We show the two weeks previous, the current week, and the two weeks going forward. That way you have time. You'll know what stocks are coming up in the next two weeks to trade. And you can start modeling up trades and analyzing those stocks and starting to get a feel for you know what's going on. You can even enter the trades early. You can enter the many of these trades we enter early. We don't necessarily wait until the suggested trade date. We will oftentimes enter these trades early. Okay, our liquidity rating. Yeah, we have some Ds. We have some Ds. Those are tough to trade, but I happen to know what these two stocks are, and they're really not that tough to trade. Some, some stocks are tougher to trade. Some stocks do. We do uh, uh, run into some liquidity issues with a few of our stocks, but the Cs, Bs, and As are awesome, okay? This is the most recent price of the underlying stock. This is the average price of the symbol in our database based on the, this is, okay, let's, this is the average debit of the trade. This information comes in handy when you're trying to decide, should I get in this trade? I mean, the average debit was uh, 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 on um, Facebook was $196. But uh, right now I might look at this and get a feel for the stock and go, well, the thing is the average price of that stock was 147 now it's 168 so this debit is probably going to be higher i got a strike spread here that's the spread between the put and the call i've got some profits uh historical profit the average maximum profit and the average uh, and the median a maximum profit for these 15 trades. Let's see this number of tests. That's this final number here. And I have the four lowest maximum profits. So if you see a negative two right here, you see this negative two, that means there was never a day when that trade was profitable. The best a trader could have done was lose 2% had he picked the correct day. However, very likely the trader lost a lot more than 2%, right? Because he probably held on to that trade. I'm not, I'm not trying to paint a picture that's all a bed of roses here, right? There's some reality here. We do have losing trades. It happens, okay? It's, you know, there's no profit without risk, right? So anyway, uh, the four lowest max profits the average max profit and the median max profit, okay? Average 54, medium 50, the lowest four, two, 12, 14, and 29. There's 18 trades. So that means there was nine that were below 50 or, or eight below 50, right? And eight above 50, right? Eight or nine, whatever, I, uh, you, you know what I mean. All right, and I'm telling you what the four lowest were. So if there's eight below 50, the other four were above 29 and below 50. And the other eight were all above 50 because 50 was the median number. So max profits, can, Marco, what? 187 uh, average max profit? 
98? Yeah, these are real numbers. These are real numbers, folks. Now, I'm not suggesting that you can pick the right day when that max profit is available, but and generally, it, it, once I'm at, you know, once I'm at a, a very high profit target, uh, if I'm hit, hitting a really good profit, I'm going to take my risk off the table and walk away. Uh, so honestly, I don't, I, I rarely see these huge, huge, huge numbers like this. But I just closed a trade the other day. Well. I am almost embarrassed to tell you. I closed one the other day for 79% profit, and I only have the trade on one day. Uh, now that's very un, it's a very, uh, it doesn't, it's very infrequent that that happens, but um, uh, it does happen. It does happen. Okay, and then the most important numbers on this sheet, in my opinion, are these IV build, IV on trade day, and IV to front expiration date. And I use these numbers in managing the trade, not only in putting, not only in deciding whether to put a trade on and making a decision about adding, putting a trade on, but also in managing the trade. Need to move on here. Um, uh, this is the the trade tracker. Uh, the trade tracker is included. This is one of the tools that's included. This uh, just shows you, this allows you to put in your trades as you take your trades, uh, to get a permanent record of what was the front expiration date, what was the back expiration date that you put on, what was the strikes that you put on, what was the, um, uh, Let's see, what was the fill price that you put the trade on for? What was the closing price? You can put in your adjustments. If, the, if there's an adjustment as a debit, put in the amount here. If the adjustment was a credit, put in the amount here. Then the rest of these columns all autofill. There's a lot of autofilling over here too, by the way. But uh, these all autofill and do all the calculations for you so that you can have a quick glance at what your success rate is on the double eagle trade using our trade tracker. All right, so upcoming webinars and links. Let me post, uh, I wonder if I can do this. I'm gonna try something here and uh, let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna post uh, some links to um, the links, the same links that you see here, I think, and paste that and send that to Uh, everyone and tell me if that came through those are uh, links in your chat box to these upcoming um, events okay the first one is a optionslam.com at gmail.com that's how you get a hold of me okay send me an email I'd love to hear from you let me know in the chat box if you would if that came through if that uh, uh, and then this one webinar Monday 10 1 Intro to the Double Eagle. Pretty much it's gonna be the same webinar that you just attended here today. I'm gonna to do it again for another group on Monday, okay? There's the registration link. If you wanna uh, uh, um, attend again, then you're uh, uh, welcome to do so. Uh, then a week from tomorrow, I'm gonna to do an in-depth look at some of those tools that I mentioned, okay? The, the, like the, uh, uh, all those tools, but the estimate next ER date, really powerful tool. Our master database, extremely powerful analytical tool. So again, we don't get access to those tools as part of the workshop. Those are tools that we use in the back office to help keep you um, uh, focused and organized. And we put the results of all those tools on the management statistics uh, PDF file that you do have access to, you get the results of all of those back office tools in the summary information on the management. Okay, sign up to attend the Double Equal Workshop. This is the URL that you would type into your uh, web browser in order to sign up for the course. All right, let's see if I got anything else. Aha, quickly, testimonials. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly read these. I think the workshop was excellently presented explaining what is basically quite complex stuff in a readily understandable format. Your approach to teaching is spot on, I think. Easy for me to take on board. Many thanks for everything. That's from Leonard. Leonard emailed me this morning. He took, the, he took this course about a year ago or, or maybe uh, uh, six or nine months ago. And he just emailed me this morning and he's go, he wants to take it again. I have a lot of traders who have taken this course three and four times. 
By the way, if you take it once, you get grandfathered in and you get, uh, we are offering a 73% discount to everybody who's ever taken the course before. They don't pay the 1085. They get 73% off the 1085 price, okay? And they get another free quarter of um, management statistics tool. I want to thank you for Outstanding Double Eagle course. Your course ranks as one of the best trading courses I have ever taken, and I assure you that I have taken many. Your unwavering commitment and enthusiasm were not only much appreciated, but contributed enormously to the success of the course. In addition, you are truly a gifted instructor. Your patience, as well as your thorough, logical, and lucid explanations of even rather advanced concepts were exemplary. You came through with flying colors on your stated commitment to over-deliver with the course. This is from Michael Richard. MIT uh, al alumni, okay? I think he's an educator there, actually. I'm not sure. Um, I am so appreciative of the information, Option Slam, Double Eagle, coaching, et cetera, wisdom and knowledge Marco shares with us. The research tools and the details you share are unmatched and cannot be find, found for the small investor anywhere except from you. Eugene, uh, thank you, Eugene. What I especially appreciate Okay, uh, I hear somebody break in, so I think I'm going over time here. Well, I'm done, so I hear you breaking in, and I am uh, finished here, and I've got through all my slides without uh, going over time very much. I wonder if the, do we have time for any questions or? No, I cannot hear you guys, but um, I don't know if you guys can still hear me. I got a message here that uh, we're going to give uh, the hosts of the webinar a few minutes to uh, get in order see if there's any questions, and um, we will uh, give them a minute. Let's see. That was the trade tracker. I'm just going back through some slides. Yeah, I think you can type them in. I can see the questions, and uh, they haven't. if they haven't cut my voice off yet, then uh, maybe I still have the floor. These are the tools that are included with the trade tracker. I mean, I mean, I mean, with the uh, with the workshop. The the double eagle can do, can become profitable. Um, the question is, when does the double eagle get profitable? Well, the double eagle can become profitable as quickly as the very first day you put it on. Uh, oftentimes it's not profitable in the first few days. It's oftentimes it's underwater uh, for the first few days, maybe even for the first week or, or more. Um, I did close a trade the other day. I only had a trade on one day and it was, uh, it was really kind of a miracle. Um, but uh, I, did, I did close a trade after being in it. it. Doesn't happen very often, but I close a trade. When, when I'm offered a huge profit in one day, I, I, I find it really hard to say no. I got a lot of static there, but uh, I, I don't see any other questions. Hey, yes. uh, can you hear me now, Michael? Ooh, yeah, that's a really, I hear it very, um, um, can you turn up the mic? Poor, poor quality voice there. How about you guys, in, the rest of you guys in the room, can you hear that? Distorted voice, what I just heard there. Uh, couldn't tell who it was. Okay, well, uh, you can't hear me too well. Is that right, Michael? Turn your volume down, maybe. Try turning your volume down. I think it sounds like your volume is up too low. Oh, it's distorted? Yeah, it's distorted. Um, okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Lucas. Uh, 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 you know, I know a lot of people are, are following. 
uh, in work, including Andrew Faldi and others. And uh, it's, it's, I think if people look at the, uh, the, this video again and uh, some other videos uh, that we have on our site, you can, you can sign up right for $10 or $15 a month or something. Yeah, I cannot understand you. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, let's just give a nice hand to Marco. And thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, attention and, uh, and your patience with me. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, uh, okay, so let's take a, a quick uh, break. Let's, uh, let's start there. Yeah, please stop recording. And uh, we'll resume in a second with the. Uh,